Hi everyone, welcome to In His Love. My name is Fedita. How is everybody doing? Yes, you're all welcome. Thank you. If you're coming back again, um, I appreciate you uh, stopping by and watching this. And if this is your first time, thank you, thank you, thank you so much uh, for stopping by. And I hope that you'll be blessed by um, today's um, uh, what we're going to talk about today. All right, let's jump into it. Shiloh, 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 Shiloh. Winners Chapel uh, yearly program that they do called Shiloh. Um, so, are you getting ready for uh, Shiloh 2021? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You getting ready? Some some are going to be traveling all the way to Nigeria, to Ota, Lagos, uh, Ogun State, Kenya land. Some are going to be viewing it from wherever country that they are. Yeah, that's Shiloh. Shiloh, Shiloh, Shiloh. So they do this every year. Um, it's an annual prophetic gathering of winners worldwide for a feast of the world. Where they access their inheritance in Christ until the land is subdued before them as a church and as individuals. And this is this they got from Joshua 18.1, where it was talking about how the, the uh, Israelites gathered together at Shiloh, right? So, but today I'm here to tell you that Shiloh is a scam. Shiloh has been destroyed. Shiloh is not what Christians should be practicing as of today. Wait a minute. I'm going to prove it to you, okay? I'm going to explain for that. Just give me a, a few minutes of your time and I'm going to explain for that. So, how do we know that Shiloh has been destroyed? The Israelites, they went, went uh, to war with the Philistines, right? And they were defeated. <clears throat> Excuse me. They were defeated. And they, they, they wondered, they were like, you know, what's going on? How come we were de defeated? You know, and they talked about them and, and, and tried to find a solution to that. And they came up with like, okay, let's go to Shiloh and bring the Ark of the Covenant to the, the battlefield because that's the presence of God, you know, in their midst. So they thought that was a good idea and they went to, to Shiloh. First of all, Shiloh is a place, right? Okay. So they went to Shiloh and they uh, brought the Ark of the Covenant, uh, which represents God's presence in their midst. They brought it to the battlefield, believing that um, God is going to give them victory in the next battle with the Philistines. And they went into a uh, war again. They went into battle and guess what the Philistines even defeated them more than the first time. So many of them were killed. So many of them were killed. You know, and the Philistines not only defeated them, they um they 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 took they took the ark of the covenant. They took it away from from the battlefield and took it with them. And after then Shiloh was destroyed. The the place Shiloh where the children of Israel would gather you know, as a temple and worship God was destroyed afterwards. That's what the Bible says. So really Shiloh, uh, before I even go, is Shiloh was done before the birth of Christ, before Christ. That's when the did Shiloh, you know. But before I go in there, let me break down um, the whole definition of what Shiloh is according to Winner's Chapel. It says is the annual prophetic gathering of winners worldwide. Annual. So you have to wait for a whole year 
to be able to gather in the presence of God, to worship him the whole year. What happens if, if you die before the next Shiloh? Your prayers can be answered. You can uh, get what you desire from God. You cannot talk to God. You cannot go to God and believe that when you pray, your prayers will be answered. You have to wait for Shiloh, right? For the big miracle, for the big breakthrough to come to happen. You have to wait for Shiloh. So it's annual, yearly, yearly. And it's usually done around December. So the next one is coming next month, very, very soon. So it's an annual uh, prophetic gathering, so they say, of winners worldwide. For the feast of, for a feast of the world, of the world, sorry. For a feast of the word of God. Uh, if I sit in my house or, you know, and I, I, I take, pick up my Bible and I sit down and, and, and study, that's feasting on the word of God. Why do you have to wait for a whole year to have a feast of the word? And then it continues, it said, uh, where, where, location, where they access the, their inheritance in Christ through the land, Unt I mean, until the land is subdued before them, where they access their inheritance in Christ until the land is subdued before them. Okay? And this, uh, yeah. So, where, location, Sheila was where they, they um, access their inheritance. So, there's a particular place to access your, your inheritance called Shiloh. So, you know, and the word of God tells us in 1 Corinthians 3.16 that um, ye are the temple of God and his spirit dwells in you. You are the temple of God. So how come we... People now have to go to another temple called Shiloh yearly, once a year. They have to gather there to pray to God for their prayers to be answered, for their desires, their, their needs or whatever they, they want, desire of God for it to be answered. They have to go to a location, to a, to a temple called Shiloh. When the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 3, 16 that you and I are the temple of God and the spirit of God dwells in us We are the temple We are the temple. So why are you still going to Shiloh? Why are you going to another temple? Uh, John 4 21 to 20 to 24 I'm gonna read that Still we're still dealing about the place the, the the place Shiloh, the place called Shiloh, where they go gather to go and access their inheritance in Christ. So let's go to John four. John John four. Uh, John four twenty one to twenty four. John 4, 21 to 24. Jesus said to her, you know, this was, this was the woman that asked Jesus, you know, said, Lord, I know you, you are a prophet of God, you know, but I'm confused. You know, our fathers tell us to worship, worship God in this temple or, or, or on this mountain or uh, we're supposed to worship him in Jerusalem. Which one is it? Because I'm, I'm confused, Lord. Which one is it? Where are we supposed to worship? And then Jesus answered the woman, says, Believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither go, when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. The hour is coming. Jesus was telling the woman that you will not need to, to go on a particular mountain 
or in Jerusalem, or in Canaan land, in Shiloh, in, in all the different mountains that people go to to pray, to worship the Father. 22. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. 23. But the hour is coming, and now is the hour. Now is the hour. When the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship, worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. That's the new location. You want to worship God? You want to really worship God? The way to worship him, the way, W-H-E-R-E, -E, the way to do that is in spirit and in truth, not in Kenna land, not at Shiloh. Shiloh has been destroyed. Shiloh has been destroyed. Let's go to Jeremiah 7. Okay. Jeremiah 7 is 1, to, 1 through 15. Uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to read all of them, but please go back, sit down and read it, read through for yourself. Okay. Okay, let me start. Um, so God gave Jeremiah a word. Jeremiah the prophet, God gave him a word to speak uh, to, to his people. And he told Jeremiah to stand at the gate of the Lord's house and speak to the people these words. Verse 3, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, amend your ways and your doings. And I will cause you to dwell in this place. For do not trust in these lying words, saying, The temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. Three times he said it. You know, people, they, they tell you, oh, this is where, you know, you have to go to church. There's a covering in, in the house of God, in the church. Over your life, there's, there's, there's a covering. When you stop going to church, you, 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 you come out of that covering and you are exposed to, to whatever evil is out there. It's a lie. It's a lie. Remember we read in uh, John, is it John? No, we read in uh, 1 Corinthians 3, 16 that you are the temple of God and the spirit of God dwells in you. You are the temple. So what temple is in a building that, that is now covering you, that is now a covering over your life? So there's no, there's, it's, all, it's all lies, it's all, it's all scam, you know, to keep people to continue to come and gather in these buildings for one purpose, money. Money, money, money. It's all about money. So, yeah. Uh, five. For if you thoroughly amend your ways and your doings, if you thoroughly execute judgment between, uh, between a man and his neighbor, if you do not oppress the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, and do not shed innocent blood in this place, or walk after other gods to your hearts, then... I will cause you to dwell in this place, in the land that I, I've give, that I gave to your fathers forever and ever. But is that our case? Look at Nigeria. Look at all the, 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 the ill stuff going on. Look at all the killings. Look at all the shedding of blood. Look at, look at the, the hatred going on, even in the church, especially in the church. You know, Churches, people, uh, Christians are killing enemies left, right, and center. Look at all the evil things going on, you know, in our land. Okay. Behold, you trust in lying words. Eight. This is verse eight. Behold, you trust in lying words and cannot pr 
profit. We use steal, murder. Okay, let's jump to the main part. Verse 12. But go now to my place, which was in Shiloh. God is telling them, go now to my place, which was in Shiloh, uh, where I set my name at first. Where, where God was there for, for them at first. The whole uh, uh, thing about them meet, meeting God and worshipping was, was at Shiloh. It was, was, a, was a big deal then, before the birth of Christ. It was a big deal, you know, and they went there. Said, tell them, say, go there where I set my name at first and see what I did to, did to it because of the wickedness of the people of Israel. That's, that's God's word. Go see what I did to Shiloh because of the wickedness of the people of Israel. Shiloh was destroyed. 13. And now, because you have done all these works, Lord, and I spoke to you, rising up uh, early and speaking, but you did not hear. I called you, but you did not answer. Therefore, I will do to the house which is called by my name, in which you trust. Shiloh, that house is Shiloh we're talking about. And to the place in which, you, in which I gave you and your fathers, as I have done to Shiloh. So Shiloh has been destroyed. What did God do to Shiloh? It was destroyed. It was destroyed. It was destroyed. And that's the same Shiloh that they still tell people in Winner's Chapel to be going to every year. Let's go to Jeremiah 26 and I'm going to read uh, verse 6. Then I will make this house like Shiloh. See, it's God is still comparing, you know, what he's going to do to what he did to Shiloh. And I will make this city a curse to all the nations of the earth. See? So what did he do to Shiloh? It was destroyed. Nine, let's jump to nine. Jeremiah 26 verse nine. Why have you professed in the name of the Lord saying, this house shall be like Shiloh, and this city shall be desolate without an inhabitant. This house shall be like Shiloh, and this city shall be desolate. That's what happened to, to Shiloh. Shiloh was desolate, was destroyed. It was gone. Even the ark of God was taken away from Shiloh. It wasn't there again. It was gone. And it's this same Shiloh that they are selling to, to, to winners, winners' members. That's what they are selling to them. You know, one thing that I've, I've seen that, you know, these winners, they, they, would, they never would tell you about the finished work of Christ. Never. Mm -mm. They don't teach that. To tell you what Christ did for you on the cross of Calvary, you know, and then they talk about sacrifice, giving your Shiloh sacrifice, which is your offering. That's the biggest part. In fact, that's the whole bottom part of this whole Shiloh. Mm -hmm. It is. It is. They tell you about Shiloh sacrifice. You know, in those days, I heard that uh, people could drop, bring whatever they have, you know, their wristwatch and put it down as a sacrifice, their shoes, their clothes, if they don't have money, you know, anything, and drop it out down as a sacrifice, you know, at Shiloh. But later on, the, 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 the bishop, he was like, no, he told them, oh, that they have to, whatever it is they want to give a sacrifice, go and sell it and bring the money. Sell it and bring the money. How come? How come? Ah, my people, God does not need your money. God does not need your money. Winners members, if, if, I pray that, you know, that the Lord will, will open your eyes of understanding to see that this whole Shiloh thing is a scam. Is a scam. But in case you, you still, you are still in doubt and you go, 
don't drop any offering. Why? Because God doesn't need your money. He does not need your money to bless you. He does not need your money to bring that breakthrough that you, that you desire. Are you trying to bribe God? Is that what it is? You know? So God does not need your money. He, he says the silver and gold are mine. So how, how much? Like, like what do you want to give to God? The only thing God needs from you and I is our hearts. Is our heart, our love for Him, our, 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 you know, give Him. Say, my son, give me your heart. Give me your heart. That's all God needs from you and I. A pure heart, a true heart, you know, a heart that knows, you know, even when you go astray, you quickly come back to God, you know, and, 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 a heart that wants to please, that, that longs after pleasing God. A heart that longs after righteousness. A heart that just wants to do good. A heart that um, wants to please the Lord. A pure heart. Your heart, however it is, God just wants our heart. That's all he desires. He doesn't want your sacrifice. Because what's, what's he going to do with your sacrifice when he, God already gave the greatest sacrifice ever that is Jesus Jesus is our ultimate sacrifice and Jesus came and died for you and I the ultimate sacrifice the overall sacrifice the supreme sacrifice so don't let anybody fool you to, to, to package your hard earned money to drops Saying that you're giving sacrifice for Shiloh. First of all, know that Shiloh has been destroyed long time ago. Shiloh does not exist anymore. Jesus came and he fulfilled the law. All of those things have been destroyed. Even Solomon's, Solomon's temple, as beautiful as it was, is destroyed. It's gone. Then what is Shiloh? That you're running up and down. Risking your life, traveling all the way to Canaan land, you know, leaving your, your work, your jobs that you're supposed to be in, you know, some people calling off just to be there, make sure they attend. It's taking all of your time. You know, you're doing all this at the end of the day. The breakthrough self, you won't see. The, the miracle you're believing God, you won't see. Guess what? Because it's not, it's not by Shiloh. It's not by Shiloh that you receive whatever miracle you're believing God for. It's between you and God in your heart. Anywhere you are, you don't have to be at Shiloh to get your breakthrough. Shiloh has been destroyed. Don't let uh, 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 Winner's Chapel continue to deceive you. Shiloh has been destroyed. Stop giving your time. Stop giving your, 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 your resources to, to sponsor that Shiloh, to furnish that commission and that ministry. Shiloh has been destroyed. Okay? I have another scripture also. This is a Psalms 78. Verse 60, that talked about Shiloh also. It says, so that he forsook the tabernacle of Shiloh, the tent he had placed among men. So here God, God was, was angered by the acts of, of the Israelites. You know, they, 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 um, they started worshiping other gods. They said, you know, doing all the sinful acts, you know, the, and God was vexed. He was provoked with anger, you know, and, you know, they, they worshipped other Im uh, images, you know, they uh, carved images and did all those things. And God was provoked and he said, and he forsook the tabernacle of Shiloh. He left the tabernacle of Shiloh. He left there. He wasn't there anymore. God left. Even in Old Testament, he left 
and we are here in the New Testament. We are here in the new covenant, which is Christ Jesus. And we're still talking about Shiloh, the old one, the old testament Shiloh, before Christ came. So what is the work of Christ then? What has Christ done for you, for you and I? Is it all in vain? You know, when Christ died on, on the cross, you know, there was darkness upon, covered the earth for some hours, I think about six hours or so. The whole place was total darkness. And the Bible says that when, when you know, when the light came back again, the, the veil that was covering the Ark of Covenant, of the Covenant, was torn, was torn in the center down and opened. So everybody was able to see the Ark like that, just like that. So in other words, Christ has destroyed every covenant, every old covenant and old doctrines. Christ came and fulfilled it. It's been, you know, it's, it, it, uh, it's, it's no longer so difficult for us to, 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 to see God or to commune with God. No, now we can go. That's the whole purpose of Christ coming to die for you and I, to reconcile us back to the Father in heaven. So that way we can go to God anytime, any day, anywhere, anywhere. Key point, key word, anywhere we can go to God. Because why? We're doing it in spirit and in truth, not in a location. So my lovely ones, I just want us to be wise. And uh, I'm talking to uh, all of us, especially winners, members, especially those of you out there preparing this year that this Shiloh is my Shiloh. In fact, they've, they've been telling them that this Shiloh is a different Shiloh. How? What makes it so different from the other one? This Shiloh is a special Shiloh. This Shiloh, the mystery behind this 2021 Shiloh coming is one thing at a time. You ask God, one thing at a time. It's all scam. It's all scam, 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 scam to get your money, to collect from you. To collect from you. Whether you, whether you ask God in your bathroom or you ask God in your kitchen, you ask God in the bush, you ask God in your farm, wherever, wherever you are, because it's not, it's not where you are, it's your spirit, it's the spirit, it's your heart. Ye are the temple of God and the spirit of God dwells in you, dwells inside of you. So don't let no one deceive you that there is a place you have to go. Don't let no one deceive you that there's a mountain you have to go. Don't let no one deceive you that there's a Jerusalem, a Shiloh that you have to go, wait for. You know, think about it, my lovely ones. Think about it. Think about it. So I'm going to leave us here with this thought. I want us to uh, take our time and study more on, um, on these uh, Bible verses that I've given read it for yourself and see for yourself and i pray in the mighty name of jesus that you will make the right choice this year you'll be smart you'll be you'll be you'll be awakened awakened from this brainwash of shiloh that winners chapel do every year wake up my my my, my fellow lovely ones god bless you thank you so much for your time and uh, i'll see you next time have a blessed one. Remember to always stay in the love of Christ. God, Christ did it all for you and me. It's, it's been done. It's been done. There's nothing, no. <laughs> it's been done. You have to believe. You have to believe that it's, the work has been done. The finished work has been done on the cross. And when you know, when you understand this, you know, nothing shall be too hard for you. Nothing shall be difficult. Nothing can put you in any other bondage again. God bless you. I love you all and I'll see you soon. Bye.